सारे दर्शकों नु मेरे वलो प्यार भरी सस्वी काल तोडे स्वागत प्रोग्राम आज दा मुद्दा दे विच मैं तोडी होस्ट आशमिता सारे नु इस फ्राइडे प्रोग्राम दे विच स्वागत करदे हां वीकेंड शुरू होन जा रहे हैं आई एम श्योर यू हैव सम एक्साइटिंग प्लान्स काफी सारी इंटरेस्टिंग चीजें हो रही हैं इस वीकेंड प्रोग्राम दे एंड दे विच एक बारी फिर तोनु ओना दी जानकारी दवांगे बट टुडे वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट समथिंग वेरी वेरी इंपोर्टेंट जो कि न्यूज़ साइकल्स दे विच लगातार Uh, बार बार अगे आ रहा है एंड ऑफकोर्स आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट अफगानिस्तान सो अफगानिस्तान में लैके तो असी वक् वक् एरियाज डिस्कस किए डिपलोमसी एंगल डिस्कस किया मिलटरी एंगल डिस्कस किया जो स्ट्रैटेजी अपनाई गई सी सक्सैस वह फेलीयर इन सारी चीज़ों की गल की जो ह्यूमैनिटेरियन क्राइसिस अफगानिस्तान के प्ले आउट हो रही है वो गल की है बट यू नो ये जो इशू है ये इन्ने ज़्यादा पहलू है पहलू है um and and one of them jedi shayad jyada gal nahi ho rahi but honi chahiye hai and i'm sure aan wale samay de vich jyada hoegi is the geopolitical implications of the united states withdrawal jis tarah usa da exit hoya afghanistan to um uh, kinne uh, issues us exit de vich sige ohna da ki long term impact hoega us area de vich us pure geographical area de vich so uh, you know we have to talk about some superpowers jo ki afghanistan de neighboring areas de vich pende of course the three big ones are india russia and china and china isn't just a superpower os area de vich china is a global superpower jo ki usa nu bhi aj threaten kar rahe in various areas so you know chinese अफगानिस्तान की रिलेशनशिप किस तरह इवोल्व होएगी कि उन्होंने विच इश्यूज उठ सकते हैं एंड हाउ दिस थिंग्स विल इंपैक्ट द रिलेशनशिप विथ of course the united states but also india um india has uh, the most to lose or the most to gain because india directly is a pure nexus de vich baithya hoya hai and uh, jithe india di gal aandi of course you have to think about the quad right so quad de bare vi tanu uh, kafi jankari ditti hai the non military alliance between the united states india japan and australia uh, jinnu apnaya gaya si jinnu ek bari fir revive kita gaya to control china's influence in that area um so is sari mix de vich hun ek bari fir um uh, you know uh, afghanistan uh, ne ek navi tusi keh lo um factor add kita nava variable add kita in sari discussions de vich so we're going to talk about all this stuff uh, very interesting things jo main aj tuhade naal kuch jankari kuch headlines share karna chahndi ha of course you know a lot of these news stories jo recently nikal rahi hain they they tell us things um jo sanu ek indicator dinde ke china kis tarah aap di jagah bana rahe hai aap da influence set kar rahe hai afghanistan de vich paave oh vaccines nu leke tusi vekh sakde ho just recently china ne pledge kita hai ki oh 3 million covid vaccines and additional um help provisions provide karange afghanistan nu this is at the same time jad ohna ne keha hai ki sadi interference afghanistan di internal affairs de vich bilkul nahi hoegi because as we know afghanistan पाकिस्तान ने यह चीज बहुत आम, बार बार एम्फसाइज की है कि सानू कोई भी योजा पार्टनर कोई भी योजी हैल्प नहीं चाहिए जो साडे आपसी मामलों के दखल अंदाजी करे एंड दैट वॉज उन्होंने व्डा गिला यू एस इनवॉल्वमेंट यू एस जो मिलटरी प्रेजेंस यही कि वह दखल अंदाजी करते यू नो एंड ये चीज once again um jithe india di proximity hagi india da influence india di involvement afghanistan de vich hagi utthe india di concern is cheez nu leke ohde utte vi gal ho rahi hai and taliban ne kya listen china nu leke india nu koi cheez di tension lan di load nahi hagi but of course um there are areas jithe india nu concerned hona chahida hai so we're going to talk about all these things and i'm very excited to bring our guest today um to join us in the program and bahut khushi ho rahi hai subject matter expert is mudde te uh, joining us from my hometown of new york city please join me in welcoming professor mandeep singh sab to pehle professor tora program de vich swagat sat shri akal sat shri akal 
So good to have you, Professor Mandeep Singh Ji. First of all, um, you know, former professor at Hofstra University, uh, working in geopolitics. Um, Thodi is area de which background be rahi hai, but now you've kind of um, moved in a different direction, um, you know, in the financial sector. But I'm sure ode which kafi overlap hunda hai with the world of geopolitics um, that you know maybe you can touch on later in the program. So. I want to start with with this China Afghanistan relationship, right? Um, the, the the big news that came out this week was that China is kind of lobbying a couple of different things. Ikta unane e vaccines the pledge kitta, right? Three million COVID vaccines. Um, and we've seen how vaccines have been used as like bargaining chips in the last uh, you know six months or so. Wak wak countries, uh, duje countries new vaccines deke ik leverage ik influence banandi koshish kare. Is China doing that? in Afghanistan right now? It's absolutely the right way, I think, so for most of the countries to get into other countries' economy and try to show they're helping them. India did that. Yep. Even they did not have for their own population, but they didn't have the yes. pressure of the virus on them. Yep. But they promised Brazil, they promised other East European countries, and yep. they even promised, I think, so Canada. Yep. And that becomes a part of the soft power influence that you go social cultural, you go medicine, you go healthcare. And on the hard power, most of the countries go with arms and ammunition, weapons. And lately we have seen, uh, once this theory was brought out by Samuel Huntington, he was a professor at Harvard, he said, there are two ways to control the world, hard power and soft power. And since he used soft power, because that was America's hegemonic uh, player on the world with food, with Burger King, McDonald's, Pepsi, mm -hmm. Coca-Cola, going in other countries, and other countries followed that. And China has a very nice play right now to make into Afghanistan and be a little bit more controlling right now to see and assess how they reciprocate they're coming in G. because there's a vacuum right now yes where are the resources going to come in G. this is that? i mean this vacuum that you speak of very important factor here because age resources the gal hagi a humanitarian aid jd lord penny i mean afghanistan has something like a 42 percent uh, rate of folks that are famished that are that d there's not enough food for them to eat uh, already and as we go into winter um as you know the weeks and the months go by unanu lord penny outside help the just for simple things like feeding uh, their population um, and you know the current status quo is that they've alienated a lot of these allies um, that were previously helping them so where is the aid coming from but with aid um, comes expectations right um, so of course China aid provide is will COVID vaccines rahi let's see a cheese kiss and develop on but I'm sure all the now could you know there's some strings attached right uh, so they have made a statement officially Beijing to statement I that Afghanistan the internal affairs they which started will look at the how much truth do you see in that can make a likelihood Heggy K actually quit the calendar in the or is it inevitable given the nature of things the for her country the apparent the calendar is the definition of real deal very true okay can then as yes la at the army the wrong it g sorry the calendar is in a year ਅਸੀਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਗਿਓ ਰਾਈਸ ਦਾਲਾਂ ਸਾਰੇ ਕੁਝ ਦੇ ਦੇਾਂਗੇ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਜਦੋਂ ਸਾਰਾ ਕੁਝ ਦੇਣਗੇ ਪੋਪੂਲੇਸ਼ਨ ਆਪੇ ਕਹੇਗੀ ਚਾਈਨੀਜ਼ ਵਧੀਆ ਨੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਫੈਕਟਰੀ ਲਾਣ ਲਈ ਵੀ ਸੱਦ ਲੋ ਯਾ ਲਾਈਕ ਵਾਟ ਵੀ ਡਿਡ ਵਿਦ ਅਫਗਾਨਿਸਤਾਨ ਇਨ ਦ ਬਿਗਨਿੰਗ ਵੀ ਸਟਾਰਟਡ ਔਨ ਅ ਵੈਰੀ ਗੁੱਡ ਪਾਥ ਵੀ ਗੇਵ ਦਮ ਆਰਮਸ ਐਂਡ ਐਮਨੇਸ਼ਨ ਪਲੱਸ ਵੀ ਬ੍ਰੋਟ ਦਮ ਐਗਰੀਕਲਚਰ ਯੂਐਸ ਬ੍ਰੋਟ ਦਮ ਐਗਰੀਕਲਚਰ ਜੀ ਆਲ ਦ ਓਪਨ ਏਰੀਆਸ ਆਲ ਦ ਓਪੀਐਮ ਫੀਲਡਸ ਵਰ converted into pomegranate yeah. plantations. Mm -hmm. They brought it back to the U.S. and marketed, as you know, at the equity supply, but it was coming from Afghanistan. And then slowly, as we know in some countries, the top brass of the country starts to benefit and local population doesn't get the trickle down effect of the resources. Bilkul, bilkul, bilkul. And, and Afghanistan, 
ਉਹੀ ਸਾਰੀ ਪ੍ਰੋਬਲਮ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਹੋ ਗਈ ਸੀ 10 ਤੋਂ 15 ਸਾਲ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਹੀ ਯਾ ਐਂਡ ਦੈਟਸ ਵੈਨ ਪੀਪਲ ਸਟਾਰਟ ਟੂ ਲੁੱਕ ਐਟ ਦ ਨੰਬਰਸ ਆਫਟਰ ਦੇ ਵਰ ਟੈਬੂਲੇਟਿਡ ਯਾ ਇਹਨੇ ਵੇਖਿਆ ਕਿ ਯਾਰ ਇੰਨਾ ਪੈਸਾ ਤਾਂ ਖਰਾਬ ਹੋ ਰਿਹਾ ਉਹ ਸਰਕਾਰ ਹੀ ਰੱਖ ਲੈਂਦੀ ਹੈ ਪਪੂਲੇਸ਼ਨ ਕੋਲ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਦੇ ਵੈਂਟ ਬੈਕ ਟੂ ਓਪੀਐਮ ਯਾ ਐਂਡ ਉਸ ਤੋਂ ਜਾਣ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਵੈਨ ਦ ਪੈਂਟਾਗਨ ਸਟਾਰਟ ਟੂ ਸਪੀਕ ਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਲੈਟਸ ਸੇ ਵੀ ਗਿਵ ਦੈਮ ਅ ਬਿਲੀਅਨ ਡਾਲਰਸ ਹਾਈਪੋਥੈਟਿਕਲ ਨੰਬਰ ਦੇ ਵੁੱਡ ਸੇ ਉਹ ਦਾ 50% ਗੋਸ ਇਨਟੂ ਯੂ نو ਐਸ ਯੂ ਅੰਡਰਸਟੈਂਡ ਫੀਡਿੰਗ ਦ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਆਫੀਸ਼ੀਅਲਸ ਟੂ ਗੈਟ ਦ ਪਾਲਿਸੀਜ਼ ਪਾਸਡ ਸੋ ਦ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਬਿਕੇਮ ਵੈਰੀ ਰਿਸਪੌਂਸਿਬਲ ਔਰ ਇਰਰਿਸਪੌਂਸਿਬਲ ਫਰਮ देयर ਪਰਸਪੈਕਟਿਵ ਦੇ ਸੈਡ ਵੀ ਰਿਸਪੌਂਸਿਬਲ ਫਰਮ ਆਰ ਪਰਸਪੈਕਟਿਵ ਇਟ ਵਾਸ ਇਰਰਿਸਪੌਂਸਿਬਲ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਵੀ ਡੋਨਟ ਲਾਈਕ ਵੇਸਟਿੰਗ ਮਨੀ I mean it, 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 it's not even wasting money it's um it, you know the the easy simple definition is corruption right um so yes corruption is uh, inbuilt in certain societies um but that doesn't mean that you know that is the way to be uh, but in any case i i think um that certainly jo to see in numbers di gal kar rahe ho is uh, waste di gal kar rahe ho it certainly led to the resentment right uh, locally bhi uh, government the afghanistan de vich resentment si gi and maybe that played a bigger role in its quick demise can you cheti o government dig pe us exit to baad there is a couple other things i want to talk about jithe khas karke military di gal aandi hai what kind of military muscle china might try to impose in afghanistan i take a choti ji break le rukde ha professor mandeep singh signal is on zero viewers to be zero conversation jari rahegi break the spot ਤੁਸੀਂ ਵੇਖ ਰਹੇ ਹੋ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਅੱਜ ਦਾ ਮੁੱਦਾ ਤੇ ਗੱਲ ਹੋ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਅਫਗਾਨਿਸਤਾਨ ਦੀ ਤੇ ਕਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਅਫਗਾਨਿਸਤਾਨ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਜੋ ਇਸ ਵੇਲੇ ਪਾਵਰ ਵੈਕਿਊਮ ਹੈਗਾ ਜੋ ਵੋਇਡ ਰੱਖਿਆ ਗਿਆ ਹੈ ਯੂਨਾਈਟਿਡ ਸਟੇਟਸ ਡਿਪਾਰਚਰ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਉਸ ਵੋਇਡ ਨੂੰ ਉਸ ਜਗ੍ਹਾ ਨੂੰ ਉਸ ਖਾਲੀ ਜਗ੍ਹਾ ਨੂੰ ਕਿਸ ਸੁਪਰ ਪਾਵਰ ਨੇ ਸਭ ਤੋਂ ਪਹਿਲੇ ਉਹਦੇ ਕਬਜ਼ਾ ਕਰਨਾ ਐਂਡ ਆਫ ਕੋਰਸ ਦ ਬਿਗ ਕੰਟੈਂਡਰਸ ਰਸ਼ੀਆ ਚਾਈਨਾ ਇੰਡੀਆ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਇਸ ਵੇਲੇ ਚਾਈਨਾ ਦੀ ਗੱਲ ਹੋ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਚਾਈਨਾ ਹੈਡਲਾਈਨਸ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਸ ਹਫਤੇ ਆਇਆ ਫੋਰ ਅ ਕਪਲ ਆਫ ਵੈਰੀ ਇੰਟਰਸਟਿੰਗ ਸਟੋਰੀਜ਼ ਕਪਲ ਆਫ ਰੀਜ਼ਨਸ ਵਨ ਆਫ ਥੈਮ ਬੀਇੰਗ ਕਿ ਚਾਈਨਾ ਨੇ ਇਹ ਅਨਾਉਂਸ ਕੀਤਾ ਕਿ ਉਹ 3 ਮਿਲੀਅਨ ਕੋਵਿਡ ਡੋਸਿਸ ਅਫਗਾਨਿਸਤਾਨ ਨੂੰ ਦੇਣਗੇ ਐਸ ਵੈਲ ਐਸ ਐਡੀਸ਼ਨਲ ਰੀਸੋਰਸਿਸ ਟੂ ਹੈਲਪ ਫਾਈਟ ਦ ਵਾਇਰਸ ਬਟ ਵਨਸ ਅਗੇਨ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਹੈਲਪ ਦੀ ਗੱਲ ਆਂਦੀ ਹੈ ਯੂ نو ਅੰਗਰੇਜ਼ੀ ਦੀ ਕਹਾਵਤ ਹੈਗੀ there is no such thing as free lunch um koi bhi kuch bhi free ch nahi karda na darya dil karna le karda hai khas karke ne vade level te so what is china getting in return or ki una di expectations hai ki afghanistan to edi gal ho rahi sad nal jude han from new york professor mandeep singh ji ek bari phir professor tonu swagat karde hain program de vich um professor mandeep we were talking about these uh, you know um, uh, influence building uh, strategies right soft power versus hard power um, and right now jo cheez khabran de vich sanu vekhan nu mil rahi hai china soft power exert kar raha hai but i'm sure there is some hard power that uh, you know is we can anticipate as we expect to kar sakde hain um, so i want to ask you about this group the east turkestan islamic movement um, it's a group that has been linked to al qaeda it is a group that that has carried a lot of uh, violent attacks in parts of uh, China khasi uh, jithe Uyghur population hai and ohna de vich bhadkao tarike naal ohna nu convert ohna jo jihadi site te leke aan di koshishan hui hain eh jo group hai ga the East Turkestan Islamic Movement ETIM kafi var inna ne Afghanistan de vich refuge litta hai right um, so how does China maneuver this situation uh, surely they they will want to address the ETIM issue with Afghanistan or with the Taliban how do you see this playing out backtrack a little you know central china is more muslim population g and we have heard about from the us and the un about their mistreatment they being kept into concentration camps g. and how they have been treated g and second impact to that is no muslim country has ever raised a point at china that why are you doing that to the muslims g they raise about that in india they raise about that in palestinian issue all issues very interesting but, yeah but you will never see a finger come at china on the mistreatment of the muslim population keeping that in mind even if a small group like this does try to inflict 
or go in and try to create chaos, China would not take it very calmly or take them or catch them and take to court of justice. Mm-hmm. They would come with a very hard hand. Nobody would know what had happened to them mm-hmm. because that's how they run the country. Mm-hmm. That's what they're used to. And dealing with Afghanistan, they have a very small border opening with them. All of the nations, Tajikistan, Iran, Pakistan, all of the nations in the north, they're big borders. Mm-hmm. China has the smallest window. But being the largest and the more rich country, they will try to completely get into China. And of course, Russia will not stop them. They're right now in good terms in how to deal with Afghanistan because they're right now pretty happy that U.S. left. Yes. But the reasons of U.S. leaving are not that they're leaving. The cost of being there was very expensive. Gee. It was to that point that uh, the cost of war, according to Brown University, they calculate the numbers. Gee. It was close to $290 million a day. Wow. wow. And they gave a number in days. It was close to 7,800 days. That was U.S. was putting in. Wow. These are numbers from Brown University who tabulate and calculate the cost of war. Gee. So. It's just not that U.S. said, okay, thank you, we are leaving because we are here, we had a good time. Gee. But after putting in that kind of money, if they're still not able to maintain peace or build infrastructure and they're just able to run the country and their economy, I think so you had, U.S. had to take the exit and they have to take responsibility of whatever they need to do. And being a landlocked country, Afghanistan also doesn't have much of a leverage. Gee and uh, doing what they feel like doing yeah. because weapons last to a certain point, resources last to a certain point. I mean, but I, I think that, terrorism is not the goal. Gee, I, I mean, and even if it was, it's uh, far down the list of priorities right now. Um, but I think in the geographical location, that really, um, it really sets the stage for some interesting dynamics, right? Not only are they landlocked, um, but they have so many neighbors, right? Um, and so many of those neighbors have volatile um, situations in their own countries. And then the border are porous, right? Sanu um, pata, I mean, a simple, I know it's a crude comparison, but to compare to the border here, uh, the Mexico-U.S. border, um, even though the United States, so kinni um, ode vich, kinni inani resources laios border nu secure currently, but because of border, kafi jaga, it's like just, you know, desert and, uh, you know, khulla dulla jaga hai ga, os cheez nu protect karna, guard karna, boh okha ho janda hai, Afghanistan, the which the oh that thing times ten we can the border, uh, the border areas are mountainous. They're hard to patrol. They're hard to safeguard. So you know, once again, is this an advantage for China or is this a disadvantage um, in terms of the actual geographic location of Afghanistan and any future projects or um, you know initiatives that they take in the country? How does the border situation impact that? Because China, the importance is really in these other because they have a lot of cash reserves. Yeah. They've been in South America, they've been in Africa, and they can easily manage what happened to Australia. If they stop buying from Australia, the economy was tanking. Yeah. And the value of Afghanistan is now just notorious because what does Afghanistan have, number one? Yeah. Resource wise, they're the largest exporter of opium. Gee. And this will be interesting because whatever resources the developed world from Japan to Australia to Canada to U.S. used to give to Afghanistan, they somehow landed up being sold in Iran, which had sanctions from other countries because the border was very easy. They could easily sell it across the border. Now, what has China got to gain from Afghanistan? That's number one. We went in for our own reasons. China doesn't have those reasons that they have a a revenge mentality, they have to change the society. Their mindset would be completely, can we make two bucks out of this country? Can we sell them something? Can we open our shops here? Can we do business here? Mm. And interestingly, uh, 
the Chinese have already started to open small shops there wow. to sell whatever they can. Wow. Because they were saying we cannot do business in China anymore, especially those we call at the Kiranidi Dukan, the small shop owners. Yeah. Because China has become so developed, so advanced, so internet oriented, it's easier to get into Afghanistan and sell whatever we can sell, let's Gee. say being a press or a hot plate or kettle. Gee. And they're there. I think so that will be their goal because what else are they going to do in a landlord country? Unless Even until they get into Afghanistan and say, you are ours now. That same thing they did with Tibet. Right. Um, you know, do you feel that in, in, in that scenario, Afghanistan will not be pushed back quicker, or you think they will kind of welcome that from China? They would be fine. They will be fine. Very interesting. Um, you know, a couple of other things in the in the news this week about, uh, of course, Afghanistan. Who like that Taliban? Kis tarah um, government formulate kare? Or an ek you know prime minister appoint kita? It's an all male, um, you know, uh, governing body. Uh, so all these things are coming out, but. I want to talk to you a little bit about the influence of other Muslim countries um, and, and what kind of a role they can play in the future of Afghanistan. You mentioned Iran, and they set a very interesting example um, with the caliphate uh, in Iran. And I wonder if there's any comparisons to be made here. It take a little break, Lisanu Rukna Pere, Professor Sadna Listra. Jurero, viewers, to see you in a very important chance to share this break. ਤੁਸੀਂ ਵੇਖ ਰਹੇ ਹੋ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਅੱਜ ਦਾ ਮੁੱਦਾ ਤੇ ਗੱਲ ਹੋ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਅਫਗਾਨਿਸਤਾਨ ਦੀ ਚਾਈਨਾ ਦੀ ਐਂ ਕਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਹੁਣ ਅਫਗਾਨਿਸਤਾਨ ਪੈਰਾ ਤੇ ਖੜੇ ਹੋਣ ਦੀ ਕੋਸ਼ਿਸ਼ ਕਰ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਸੈੱਟ ਕਰਨ ਦੀ ਕੋਸ਼ਿਸ਼ ਕਰ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਅਲਾਈਅੰਸਸ ਬਣਾਉਣ ਦੀ ਕੋਸ਼ਿਸ਼ ਕਰ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਸੋ ਇਨ ਆਲ ਆਫ ਥਿਸ ਮਿਕਸ ਬਾਕੀ ਮੁਸਲਮ ਨੇਸ਼ਨ ਸਟੇਟਸ ਦਾ ਕੀ ਰੋਲ ਹੋਣ ਵਾਲਾ ਕੀ ਰੋਲ ਹੋ ਸਕਦਾ ਹੈ ਇਹਦੀ ਗੱਲ ਕਰਨ ਜਾ ਰਹੇ ਤੇ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਜੁਆਇਨ ਕਰ ਰਿਹਾ ਪ੍ਰੋਫੈਸਰ ਮਨਦੀਪ ਸਿੰਘ ਫਾਰਮਰਲੀ ਅ ਪ੍ਰੋਫੈਸਰ ਐਟ ਹਾਸਟਰ ਯੂਨੀਵਰਸਿਟੀ ਇੱਕ ਵਾਰੀ ਫਿਰ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਸਵਾਗਤ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਯੂ نو this uh, geopolitical subject um, I, I think uh, uh, you must miss your teaching days uh, professor uh, because there's so much good material to discuss even I wish I was back in class talking about this writing some papers on this um, but this is like material uh, you know that will last you know decades uh, the case study of Afghanistan um, but you know before we get back to the current and the future um, scenarios you play out home and let's talk a little bit about the past right because afghanistan has had this this tumultuous history um that they've been occupied you know by the russian the british the americans um and it it, it kind of always ends the same way is there a simple reason why this keeps happening why history keeps repeating itself in afghanistan in the same brutal way over and over again it's it's very interesting that you bring this point up I, you know, being landlocked, number one, in the past, it, nobody knew it was landlocked. There were no borders. Gee. The, the Britishers made the borders. And this area is barren land because of the cold climate and the cold air, rarely something grows. So things like opium do grow in today's world. Gee. Yes. And in the past, you know, most of the, what we call the invaders in India who came, came from these parts of the world. Mm -hmm. And as we are speaking about history the only person or the only king who were able to establish a rule in afghanistan was maharaja ranjit singh yes. in history yes who, who captured and then showed yeah. to the world that he captured yeah because he knew how the population was they're very strong rustic yeah. uh full of respect for people and of course he had the common sense or his courtiers had the common sense to not treat them as we captured you yes but he provided his resources for the betterment of the people and of course it was his two french generals who were part of his army who were able to strategize and not beat them with arms and ammunition gee ranji maharaja ranjit singh was the first one who didn't attack and kill or beat the afghans gee. It was the first time I think so the word soft power should have been used because he mm. conquered them with his love and giving them resources. Yes. And Afghanistan was part of his empire. Gee. That's where it goes. But since then the Russians came in they basically had the whole economy turned upside down. 
social culturally. It was the only Muslim country in the world in the 70s where women had more rights than any other Muslim country in the world. That's how good it was Gee. for the Muslims. Gee. And with the Mujahideen coming back into the power, that got swept away. Gee. Do we blame the Russians or do we blame the Mujahideen or somebody else who imparted this new doctrine of women not having a role to play in society? That still stays Gee. in the open and comes in the Americans. You, the British, that, the British, don't forget about the British. British, that was, again, they tried to conquer. Right. So, so the, they, it was the same. Gee. That's why they all got slaughtered, and we have the story, one man was left alive to go back and report. But that was their normal dictac, nothing new to the gee, British. Gee, gee. We are talking about how we can see Afghanistan come out of it better. Hanji. Of what they were in the past. Gee. Not just being a doctrine of mistreating women, social culturally downtrodden, yeah. not take care of the weak, and be what they are now. Because they were very well developed 30 years back, 40 years back before the Russians came in. They were not behaving what they're behaving today. Today, it just looks like they're back into the tribal ages. Nothing wrong with the tribals. Gee. But yes, they miss out on certain social cultural aspects of life. Yeah. And how do we see Afghanistan be back like it was in the 1970s? Uh, I mean, what are the, are the, sorry, go for it. No, 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 please, please go ahead. Finish. No, that's what we are trying to see, how we have to see so, other Muslim nations play a role. I, I, I know. From Indonesia down G, to. G, I, 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 I can't help but draw the comparison it take i know compare nahi karna chahiye because it, we're talking about very different scenarios here but something similar took place in iran uh, before the uh, you know the 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 toppling of the shah um, iran was a modern um, you know very uh, socially progressive society i mean I, I, those images you know every now and then they'll come up on social media or on the internet of women in universities you know they're wearing skirts, their hair is down, they're, they look normal, they have books in their hand, they're happy. Um, and this is Iran. And then you have the after pictures um, and the, you know, fully hijab, and, and, you know, they, they, they don't have a role in society. And it seems that, you know, what you're describing, Afghanistan, Vare, is something very similar. Is there a comparison to be made here um, between specifically Iran, the Joe story, and uh, the direction Afghanistan is going in? And, and what kind of a a proxy influence can we expect from other Arab, uh, you know, powers, right? Whether it's the uh, UAE, uh, Saudi Arabia. I mean, what, what can we expect from the Muslim world on uh, Afghanistan's future? Iran was very progressive. But the reason was that these two companies, Shell and British Petroleum, were buying oil for very cheap. Yeah. And Shah was letting them take it for the sense. And the Iranians, on the other side, you know, there are always two sides in the same society, said, we are not getting enough resources. Why don't we sell them at the market price? Mm -hmm. And not discounts, selling oil. That didn't happen. So, of course, when the other political side doesn't get what it wants, they start to become stronger and stronger, and they grow in numbers. Gee. And once they became that strong, and then, of course, religion plays a very important role in countries like these. Mm -hmm. So that whole agenda got fallen into the hands of what we see today. It became more religious Iran. Yeah. So when the Shah of Iran was thrown out, instead of more liberal parties coming into play, a religious party comes into play. The Khomeinis are now running around. And the best way they know is religion. Yeah. And they impose religion on everyone. And the economic struggle turns into a religious benefit to Iran. And same thing, I would not add this in, but the only country after that was Iraq, which gave more freedom to women, but that also fell off. 
So what other countries are supposed to do? Countries like Saudi Arabia? They're as good as to the women as what Taliban is. They don't give much rights to women. Right. And I don't know how much power that the UAE or Dubai or Abu Dhabi have on imposing new freedoms or benefits for the women. I mean, chalo, orta na the jo masla hai ga unnu ek paas ye agar I mean, there is you know very little I think hope or expectation um, that the the global community has, unfortunately, um, for the future of women um, in some of these parts of the world. Uh, but what about just influence in general, right? Um, will these uh, Muslim countries be looking to exert any influence to get maybe their piece of the pie now that there is this vacuum? Is there some proxy, uh, you know, government proxy um, uh, uh, ways that they will implement uh, to, to get their essentially their fingers in into Afghanistan? One very strong point the Muslim countries have to take responsibility is which they give to other countries to appease Muslims is when Muslims are leaving Afghanistan now. And the Western powers are bringing them to Europe and Canada and US. I don't see many Muslim countries, number one, saying, oh, why don't you leave here? We are a Muslim country. We can take, of, yeah, take care of them. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. Yeah. But India, the Magar Domitic Pai, and then Kitusi Ki Karta Sando. Yeah. But I think so they have to stand their ground, which they have always given the West the responsibility of, if I saw that with Iran, I saw that with Iraq, I saw that with Turkey, I saw this now with Afghanistan. When it's time to leave, nobody goes to another Muslim country. Yeah, it's they so They all want to be in the West. Of course. But it's the West then, that they love to, you know, um, rally around in hatred against. So it's very interesting. It's kind of a, a, a big hypocrisy um, at play here. But you know, to see U.S. the Galkiti, and of course, um, uh, the the big question everyone has is, well, what does the future of uh, Afghanistan mean for the United States and its allies um, in that region, particularly India? I want to talk to you about the Quad. Um, there's a couple of really important things here that need to be discussed. We have to stop. A little break, please, Professor Sarnal Jurado, viewers, to see Jurado, U.S., India, Afghanistan, the Galhu. It's special Friday evening, a program de which um, we're talking about Afghanistan, of course, because it's a story developed. It's a very good thing. 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 You know, geopolitically, in the region, the U.S. said that exit of Afghanistan is impact impact. Of course, who better to join us for this topic than a former professor of geopolitics, Professor Mandeep Singh Ji? Fair program, de which uh, to de. Professor, we've covered a lot of stuff, right? Um, in, in regards to Afghanistan, the China nexus is a big, big story. Joe's half day, um, do thin headlines, karke sarea de agiaria. But of course, you know, China is uh, you know such a superpower, um, that uh, China the influence curb currently recently, um, quad uh, alliance new revive kita gaya, the US, India, Australia, Japan alliance, um, was you know, uh, is called into action. I, uh, Professor. Professor, excuse me, uh, Prime Minister Modi is coming uh, to the United States next weekend to have a meeting with um, members of the Quad, leaders of the Quad, and President Biden uh, for this exact reason. Um, so, you know, one of the articles I was reading, break the program to Pelisar Divi Gal Horisi, you know, it's an opinion piece um, in the Wall Street Journal that said, um, Joe Biden the blunder, see, and once again, this is an opinion piece, uh, right? Joe Biden the blunder, see, Afghanistan, they exit, uh, which, oh, sub to jada pari pana, India, te, that India has the most to lose um, because of the alliance with within the quad. Uh, make sense of that for us. What does that mean? You know, when someone writes an opinion piece saying that India has the most to lose, ki khatra hai India le is vele te quad alliance nu, um, is exit nu lake? Vikko, if you look at the history of India and the back track in Afghan-India relationships, it goes way back. 
to the point the Buddhists used to be there. Yes. Hindus used to be there. The Sikhs used to be there. They all went for trade. They were a very acceptable Ji. community or a society or a country. And of course, it's always a change of ideology which changes a country. Russians Pakistan to India. Yeah. Pakistani Muslims see the all the countries surrounding Afghanistan are Muslim too. Yes. Oh, okay, guys, India. So something there was an attachment or a connection or benefit. Ki yar, yahan pe hamara dhyan diya jayega. Ji. Hai thi So today, India still is in a safe area. Ji. Safe because it does not border Afghanistan. Hanji. Right. Ji. Pakistan borders Afghanistan. If India has done something, or has done something, or has done we know who is to be pointed a finger towards. Ji. And India, of course, they have invested billions into Afghanistan, especially on the roads. northern side, on Ji. infrastructure, so they have a hospital. Banai. Ji. I think so. India did good part on the infrastructure side. Yes. And what nuksan ki ho sakta hai? If China gets into the military side of Afghanistan Ji. and says, you know, I have a direct access to Iran now, city Now Pakistan is in straight access. Let's again traumatize the Kashmir issue. Mm -hmm. And as you know, in the past, Punjab, which was a little bit of a plane, it was always crossed the border. Hmm. So India will have just to pay more resources to protect its border and less interference, because how much can you stop a border is a border? Yeah, border is a border, especially a porous one. Um, you know, once again, uh, to see um, uh, resources, the focus, the focus. So, uh, you know, we understand the point that uh, you have kept here, that India has to attention divert. Honi. It's possible that they have time, resources, and attention lani hai to safeguard against this potential new threat that could arise. Um, Let's take that same principle, that same idea, and apply to the Uni United States side. I was reading another article that said, actually, Bame largely, um, age of America, the exit hega Afghanistan, to oh, ik, ik, advantageous uh, uh, view for China. It is a boon to China that um, they benefit and they But I read an interesting article that said that there is an opposite scenario that might be true that in the past United States is a war they which this war on terror um, and, and, and nation building essentially in Afghanistan they which kinne resources by, by, by your uh, uh, statement before Brown University has put the cost of 290 million dollars a day for over 7,000 days. Um, so that cost of war is no longer hanging over our head, right? United States, who na ek military torte na ek financially torte uh, engaged hega with this very expensive and very draining, um, you know, occupation. Uh, so does that free up the United States to focus more attention towards curbing China's power? And this article argued that this exit from Afghanistan. Afghanistan is actually a bad thing for China because hun US they call free time, free pesa hega to actually focus on curbing the Chinese influence in the world. What do you think about that? It's I think so there it's a two way street. And China has established itself as a manufacturing power in the world. Hmm. So till somebody else comes in to take that manufacturing from China, they will continue doing what they're doing. And the world will keep buying from them at whatever price they get. And we have seen how the shipping lines are now charging some thousand dollars extra per container. China has increased the prices of their production. And the world is still really willing to pay for it because there is no other substitute as of yet. Mm -hmm. It's a good chance for India because India is smart. 
resources, engineers, land, water, they have it. Let's utilize it. Can we get manufacturing out of China into India? That's on India's capability and the resources. Plus, if that's the kind of price you're going to pay to buy from China, can we bring those jobs back into America? Gee. Can we? Or in, back into Canada or wherever it may be. Gee. That's where China gets hurt, not just by our resources being taken away. Gee. And Chinese are also one of the oldest civilizations on the planet. They also have strategies. They would just not say we can walk into anywhere. And as you know, all major theories of war were written in China. Gee, yeah. The art of war, literally. The art of war. So all so they know how to play these games. They're not new to them too. Yeah. They only lost once during the opium wars. Yes. All the opium union, they would have not lost the paper manufacturing or ammunition. So I would not give them that much that they would lose mm. because they know the game well too. Mm. And I would always say living in coexistence is always better for superpowers. Yes. Because they can balance the world well. Gee, um, Professor, uh, you know, uh, of course, uh, you being a, an academic uh, uh, individual, uh, it's just that we can probably talk all day. Um, but unfortunately, we don't have that much time. Janne ne masif tode to yehi galay ka pushna janiya. You know. Uh, when I was uh, studying political science a long, long time ago in college, um, they had presented a model uh, for the the most harmony that has existed in the world in, in, in recorded history has been when there have been two um, competing superpowers um, that they have always balanced each other out, right? And over the years, of course, it's changed. The players have changed, but that model has been largely successful, right? Um, one could argue that even in modern day that those two powers um, could be the United States and China um, that are pushing against each other. And as a result, the rest of the world, um, you know, is enjoying a certain level of harmony and peace um, and stability, right? Um, we were talking before this program, uh, you know, about China being viewed as, uh, at least here in the United States, as a bad actor, right? Um, and in other parts of the world as well. Do you agree with this statement or do you feel that um, that's just our view here because we're in America and the rhetoric is, the narrative is so strong? Um, or do you feel that there's, you know, something positive that can be said about its role uh, in global stability? As you know, there were Whoever writes history, the other person is not good if it's competing. Yeah. We saw it the First World War. We saw it in the Second World War. We saw after the Second World War ended, and Russia was a very bad actor from the perspective of the government, Washington, D.C. But the Russians at the time even loved American products and goods. Their, their, our consumption of goods, what we produce, is, was more in Russia. Yep. They would smuggle it, they would get it. The Cold War existed for years and decades, but the consumption patterns did not change. Mm. They just continued consuming American products. But in books, they were the bad actor. Yeah. In their books, we were the bad actor. Yeah. And since China started, it's been only 20 years yeah. that they have come into prominence. Yes. And I would say it's only eight years that we started to see they have climbed that fast. And we only have tried to call the bad actors in the last three years. Yeah. Not before that. Gee. If you look at New York, if you look at Canada, if you look at our real estate market, our biggest investors for the last eight years in this country Absolutely. have been the Chinese. Absolutely. So, that, so we cannot say that they're the bad actors and then say, okay, come invest in our country. Yeah. And they've been buying most of our treasuries. Yes. Why are we selling it to them then? So I think so. It's a very loose term. I would not use it for mm -hmm. a country that size, that G big, G that G successful. G and then tell them, can you invest in a country? <laughs> yeah, very true. It's not, very so true. It's, it's not a bad actor so far. If you look at New York even today, they own some of the 
I mean, forget New York, you know, COVID showed us something very important um, with the supply chain disruption that as much as we love to hate on certain part, certain companies and certain countries, um, we rely on them the most uh, for, for simple day to day things, right? Um, people love to say boycott Amazon and then go on to their prime and order, you know, one thing uh, that is arriving the next day. And I guess China fits into a similar place. Um, Professor Manji, uh, Mandeep Singh Ji, thank you so much for putting things into perspective, especially this um, this this view that Jyotusi uh, Sanu offered, that China nu lake, that we really should expand the way we think about um, China as a bad actor. And like we were discussing, there's nothing black and white um, in any of these geopolitical scenarios that we discussed today. Not Taliban denal, not China denal. Uh, so let's see how this story develops. Thank you for your time, Ikwari uh, Fir, and do join us. Again, Lagdani ke story kiti vi jaan wali anytime soon. So I'm sure there'll be other things that we would love to have you uh, enlighten us. Thank you. About. Thank have you a, for your time. Have a good rest of your evening. Yeah. Sat Sri Kal. Sat Sri Kal. Ji. Um, so of course, this program de which kafi saari chizan discuss kiti to adinal. Janiya ne mere sirf ek reminder dena chaniya. Is Sunday nu protest ho rhi hai Washington DC de which Prime Minister Narendra Modi di visit nu lake odi jaan kai to adinal pehle bhi share kiti si. If this is something jide which usi involve hona chande ho, tu si sanu contact kar sakde ho. To anu saari information odi provide kar dange. कौन ऑर्गेनाइज कर रहा है किस तरह तुम उ पहुंच सकते हो देर इज अनदर प्रोटेस्ट हैपनिंग इन डीसी दिस वीकेंड ऑन संडे को इंसिडेंटली द जैन जस्टिस फॉर जनवरी सिक्स रैली जो जनवरी सिक्स दिन वॉशिंगटन डीसी से हमला होया कैपिटल बिल्डिंग यू नो एंटर किया गया एक मॉब वालों उन लोग इंसाफ ले उन्होंने हक ले कि किस तरह इतने की गवर्नमेंट उन्होंने यू नो फॉर नथिंग फॉर नो रीजन प्रोसीक्यूट करिए उस चीज़ ले एक रैली रखी जा रही है इन वाशिंगटन डीसी सो इट वी अ वेरी बिजी डे इन वाशिंगटन अगर तुम एरिया यू प्लैन टू विजिट बी केयरफुल इस मुद्दे को लैके अच्छे प्रोग्राम को लैके सा कोई क्वेश्चन comments concerns ji jaroor sanu likh sakde ho for justbroadcasting.com ashmita justbroadcasting.com hun mainu deo just have a good weekend satyakal